Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of our Smoky Mountain Wrestling Podcast. This is Smoky Mountain Wrestling, episode 185 from August the 12th of 1995. And this is Booking the Territory, the unprofessional wrestling podcast, where today I'm here again with Doc Turner and Bobby Blaze. I think that's how Tommy Noe used to say it whenever he would announce you. I'm not a good Tommy Noe uh, imitator. Anyway, Tommy, if you're listening, I talked to you a couple weeks back on the phone. Uh, I'm glad to hear you're doing well and things are getting better for you. So uh, shout out to Tommy Noe, who did have a stroke a while back, uh, but he is on the men and recovering. So I'm glad to hear that about Tommy. That said, let me welcome in Bobby and Doc. Bobby, how you doing this morning? I just talked to you like five minutes ago. Um, yeah, and no, I'm doing great, man. Thank you. Good to be here. Appreciate it. Living a dream, brother. And Doc, there what about you? 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 you hanging in there? What? <laughs> okay. Oh, we started? I'm I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that this was actually the You're beginning, you're so. really trying to be like Hopper and it's not working. It's you're, you're falling <laughs> flat. You're falling man, flat. It must it must be it must be great to be so free and easy like Harper, man. It just floating through life like whatever happens, happens, bruh. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that stresses him out sometimes is broads. Yeah, maybe <laughs> he doesn't. Stopped eat, if he stopped eating their ass all the time, he wouldn't have to worry about so much. <laughs> Christ. It's the only thing that stresses him out, man. Other than that, I've never known such a carefree individual that just comes and goes as he pleases and just doesn't pay attention to a clock. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, so couple things before we get into this shout out to disrespectfully classy marky blassy kyle riley mike childry for your generous patronage each and every month we appreciate it and like i said uh here we are we are doing episode 185 august 12 1985 uh we're technically still in jellico for some parts of this but we also go to the super bowl as well so uh doc you got anything for you before we jump into this week's episode of smoky mountain and I think we do have quite a bit to talk about as we go through this. So we we'll probably want to keep the chit chat to a minimum on the front end so that we can keep the chit chat to a maximum where the where we make the money. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you. So with that said, we'll jump into this thing. Less stature well, and chip- hold on, I got one thing right here. First theme song or second theme song, Bobby? First. Yeah, we- Thank you. Uh the second grew is growing on me but i'm still a fan of the first like a malignant cancer cell dude it's awful okay hey it's a real fine line for white guys in rock to do the boogie thing like it could be real bad or it could be leonard skinner and the black crows it's a real fine line that's all i'm gonna say okay all right four yeah, Let's I mean, get... you end up, you end up, you either end up with "Give me three steps" or "Achy breaky heart." You know what I mean, Bobby? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Ashley, you, Kentucky. You, you, yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus from here. My achy breaky heart. One told me I should have used the uh, as my finisher the achy breaky heart punch. Um, <laughs> I believe that song fucking give you a throat fucking punch. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, got- you could end, end up with something, you know, at a scale of nine or ten uh, w- with Skinner, or you could fucking have a, you know, a zero one getting fucking throat punched doing the fucking uh, boot scoot boogie and the fucking uh, uh, breaky breaky heart line dance there. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what do I fucking know? I'm still in Ashland, Kentucky, and I don't have a daughter that's fucking worth twenty five billion fucking dollars. And, so and, it and paid you, off, you know. And you got achy breaky internet. I know. Yeah. And All right. Break your fucking bones. <laughs> <laughs> so the opening of the show, we got Les and Chip with Jim Cornette out there at the top of the show. And Cornette hey, let me tells say us, something real quick. Oh real yeah, quick. go ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt you. I got invited to actually be in that video. I was home for Christmas. 
and what they did, and, and, and Billy Ray, I'd, I'd met him several times. Uh, they were shooting at the Paramount Art Center here in Ashland, Kentucky, and he asked me if I wanted to come down and wear my ring gear uh, on, on the video. No shit. But I was heading to Florida the day after Christmas to to go back to Florida to, to continue wrestling at Malenko's, but also I was lined up with uh, WWE or WWF at the time for some uh, TV shows, and I knew they paid pretty good, you know, doing their television, doing the job spots or whatever. Uh, but um, And he wasn't shooting it until – about three weeks later, and I would have still been in Florida. And I don't know I would have been in or not. I'm just saying he did ask me to be in the Aiki Break Your Heart video, and um, I had to politely decline due to a schedule conflict. But, um, you know, hell, there you go. I thought that's pretty cool. I just need to get that out there. Wow. Doc, I made the best decision. On... <laughs> Doc, you got any you thoughts turned... on Bobby potentially well, being yeah, in that video? He, he turned he turned him down, not the other way around. See, that's how it goes. That's it was real a power. scheduling conflict. That's all it was, you know. And I knew what WWE or F at the time, whatever, they, they paid pretty good for those TVs. I'd already worked Piper and a couple other ones, and I was getting taken care of pretty good. And I was already planning on going to Florida anyway, and they gave me two dates down there. Uh, I was staying in the Tampa area, and one was in Daytona, and one was in Fort Myers. Both real easy drives, good payoff. Like, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So. Not every not everybody can say that they uh, turned down Billy Ray, ain't that right, Doc? But I bet you all the hussies in, in a tri in the Tri County area can't say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> all hey, right. Hey, yeah. well, enough about that. We got ourselves a decent little match going on in the ring. We do. Before that, though, there was an opening with Les and Chip and Jim Cornette at the top of the show. And Cornette tells us that Brad Armstrong bit off more than he could chew last week when he challenged every member of the militia one by one on this week's episode where Brad uh, basically uh, has to go through a gauntlet match, what we know now to be called a gauntlet match uh, with the militia. And like Doc said, we then go straight to the first part of the gauntlet, which is Brad versus Al Snow. And Brad defeats Al Snow with the Russian leg sweep. One down, but then here comes Unibom. I'll throw it to Bobby. Did you have anything from Al Snow and Brad? Uh, as they no, I thought it was a good start. match. I really did. Um, it, they worked it out really good. Uh, give and take, back and forth, what have you. But I like the uh, uh, suplexes, and I like the uh, finish. When Rut, I don't think anyone ever done it better uh, when Brad would set you up in that Russian leg sweep and always float it over. So um, I thought it was really good. Uh, I enjoyed the match. Quick, to the point, some hard hits, some kicks, and bada boom, bada bing, and there you go. Uh, nice, and I like to finish. I agree. I love the rush of leg sweep from Brad. Doc, you got anything from it, or you want to keep going? Uh, just real quickly, you know, how, notice how uh, in our other show, he was back in the NWA a few weeks ago with a new attitude, and now we haven't seen him in a few weeks. I have noticed that. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. You are correct. Okay. So, we then go to Brad Armstrong versus Unibom. Brad holds his own against the big man. He throws a sweet drop kick at one point. Man, that thing looked good. Uh, he hits Unibom with the Russian leg sweep, and that's two for two. Next up is Buddy Landell, yep. but I'll throw it to Bobby first, and he can tell us what he thought about Brad versus Unibom. Um, again, just a little solid match. The just enough to get Brad over against a bigger, stronger opponent. Uh, Unibom didn't, you know, no sell anything and, and didn't, you know, he, he did his stuff too. Um, Could have went either way on it, but, um, you know, it's a work. So they, they worked it the way it's supposed to. And they were, you know, like I said, big, big drop kick from Brad. He, he, he had them big, powerful thighs. He'd get up off the mat. He does it. He turns around. He does that sell to the audience, you know. Um, and then, of course, going into the finish, once again, the big Russian leg sweep with a beautiful float over for the pin. Um, of course, someone jumped up on the apron there, and I think it was a punisher. But that's a good finish, see, uh, because we're uh, Unibom's a bigger man. There you go. Um, and then, of course, Budro. Budro's going to make light word of Brad. So uh, that match itself, though, was very solid. And, again, love the finish. I to go totally... to the... Okay, sorry. No, I was going to say, I totally, I, I love the finish, too, with the Russian leg sweep. I'll throw it to Doc to see if he's got any thoughts on uh, Unibom. And I was just, wa I was waiting for Tracy to run out and tell Mark Curtis what happened so we could restart the match, because that <laughs> happens every damn week. Uh, man, I I thought it was great, because I love the way that, um, first of all, back to that drop kick, that was awesome. But when Buddy hit him with the racket and then pinned him and then hopped up and pumped his fist like he had just, you know, that reminded me of, if y'all remember the movie, Mr. Mom, they had the obstacle course thing at the boss's house and everybody had to like let him win. 
And at the end, he won, and he's running around like he just won the Super Bowl when everybody let him win. That's what that <laughs> shit reminded me of. Well, I think uh, on all three of these matches, it was timing, and you can't teach timing. So when the first match took place, and then you know, you know Al got pinned, boom, Unabomb's there. The timing was perfect. He just now beats uh, Unabom, where he ran him into the Punisher. Perfect timing. And when Mark Curtis is you know telling him to get out of the ring, once again, it's all so much timing. You can't teach it, but these guys are such professionals. When Brad turned around, there's Bud Rowe. Boom, gimmicks him with the, you know, a rack at the throat. One, two, three. And like I said, gets up, you know, hey, I've done it. I've done it, baby, you know, and that, that that's perfect. So that, that segment right there was couldn't have went any more perfect than what it did. So, Buddy, uh, Buddy celebrated like he won the Super Bowl, which was great. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he gets in. He immediately hits He hits him, hits Brad with Corny's racket. And, and like Doc said, he's fist pumping and cheering like, oh, yeah, I did it after Mark Curtis turns around yeah. and counts the pin. Really good stuff. Uh, Budro was great right there. It takes Bullet Bob to Armstrong to come in with his uh, Tennessee toothpick to clear the ring yeah. for Brad. But I thought I thought it was good. I mean, look, it, Brad, I think, comes away strong from this. And, and Absolutely. At this, at the same time, because he beat two guys. At the same time, you know, Buddy and Corny look like a bunch of chicken shit heels, which is what they are, which is the point of it. Uh, look right. how look how Buddy had to win. So there you go, uh, Do- yeah. Bobby. Any other thoughts before we move on? Yeah, one thing Buddy told me a long time ago. Obviously, a long time ago. Damn. Uh, as much as business is a is a work, it's a shoot. And so, um, you know, meaning that you know sometimes it, it is a shoot to get this person to do that and that person to sometimes like pulling teeth. But when it works, it's so smooth. And he and he. So when he does the gimmick with the racket, boom, heals him out. Then it goes into the shoot of Buddy really convinced you. If no, if you don't convince you, he convinced himself. Uh, I really did win the Super Bowl. You know, I did it on my fucking own. It mm-hmm. didn't take Brad having to beat two other men. It didn't take the uh, the tennis racket. By God, I did it. That's a good heel right there. So he makes it to a shoot like the believability factor goes up. That's why I was getting that. So uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. I totally agree. I totally agree. Doc, you got anything before we keep going? Totally agree. Love Buddy when he's in the flow. So with that said, after the match, we go to Brad Armstrong and Bob Armstrong, who have something to say related to what just went down there with Les. Here it is. Hey, Bullet Bob Armstrong and Brad Armstrong. Young man, you did a heck of a job up there, and they had to nail you from behind to get to you. Fire on the mountain is what it's all about. I don't care where I have to go. I don't care what I have to go through, brother, but I'm going through it to get to one man. That's Buddy Landell. And I'm going to leave you, Buddy Landell, in a mess and nothing but hair, nothing but blonde hair in these hands, and you look like a pile of jello on a mat. And that's not a threat, my friend. That's a promise. Bullet. And I know Bradley, he never breaks a promise. And tonight I can't wait to get my hands on the man, the general. And when I get through with General Cornette, he's going to be a buck butted private. Because tonight in Fire on the Mountain, brother, it's a first blood match. And I ain't going to be wearing no tie. I ain't going to be wearing no hat. I'm going to bring fisticuffs to see you, brother. And Blood on the Mountain, run, boy, run. I don't care where you run. I'm going to be running up that big back bat of yours. And I'm going to take you down. And Blood will flow like wine. Tell him about it. Ain't that right, Brad? That's a Solomon Stone. Tonight, it ain't too long away. It ain't too far off, brother. And the core, I believe they call those short timers. Those boys right there are short timers because it's tonight and it ain't too far off. You better brother. There you have it from the Armstrong. Bob against Coronet. Brad wants a piece of the nature boy. And right now, let's take a look at some of the action that sets the scene for tonight's fire on the mountain. All right, Bobby, what'd you think right there from Brad and Bob Armstrong? Very strong and solid interview, man. Good promo for tonight, and and got it didn't didn't really bury anyone, but they got themselves over to what it's supposed to. Um, two good baby face fired up interview. I agree. I thought it was strong. Stop somebody pa- somebody passed the damn collection plate, bro. Yeah, he. I mean, <laughs> the blood's gonna flow like wine. Fire on the mountain, run, boy, run. You know what that's from, Mike? Don't you? No. Marshall Tucker band, brother. Is it or I thought it was Charlie Daniels with uh, well, Run Boy you, Run, or is it Marshall Tucker? Oh, uh, you it could be what Devil Went Now Georgia. You say yeah. that fire? Okay, yeah. you're going on that Fire on the Mountain. I was thinking the uh, Marshall Tucker band, the okay, actual song yeah. Fire on the Mountain. Yeah, but yeah, got... I think you might be right. It might be from uh, yeah Fire on the Mountain, Run Boys Run. Uh, yeah, it might be more from Devil in Georgia. 
Devil went down to Georgia, rather. We're talking right around Mike right now. He doesn't know. Yeah, I know. It's, it's Southern fucking rock. You know, what are you going to do? I so. mean, if you said if you if you said Molly Hatchet to the guy, his head would explode. Like, who's Molly? Who's Molly? And why does she have a hatchet? Uh, Grow up. And here's what I'm thinking, because Brad's good, but he's standing next to his dad, who's phenomenal. I mean, that that kind of it kind of sucks that Brad is that good, but Bob is that much better. Bob was just. Talking him in the fucking building. Jesus, I want to go now, man. He he I'm a I'm a believer, man. It's gonna be a bloody fucking mess. Let's yeah. gas up Mrs. Doc's vehicle and uh let's gas up LaFonda's vehicle and, and head that way, Doc. What do you think? I, I say we do it, man. I'm I'm ready to go to Tennessee and make fun of the locals and uh you know, see some wrestling. Get banned from that I, state, like uh, like the the Oklahoma folks told you, don't come. I back just to told the I, I make I make enough money that we'll buy out the whole first row, so we don't have to, and the and the seats behind us, so nobody gets to sit next to us. God, that would be great. <laughs> buy See, the that's whole. A, that's some Booker I, man shit. <laughs> I was going to say you you guys would probably fit right in and have a good time, but fuck, if you're going to do that, you just created all kinds of heat for yourself. <laughs> so you're not going to fit in. They're like you motherfuckers. Uh, they're going to be popcorn. <laughs> Pop, popcorn and soda pops thrown at you all damn night, you buy the first two rows. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised you'd have had a hard time getting them because those two front rows, uh, probably three deep, actually went real, real quick and had people sitting in the same seats every month or every couple weeks. So you'd have had a hard, you'd had, you'd had a bribe of food people to give those seats up probably. But you well, would make no friends at any uh, arena if you if you did that. I will say that. I was going to say, you guys would fit right in and have a good time, but nah, you're going to be out of way. You, they're going to be like, look at these fucking assholes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're going to be pretty hot at you. So, uh, that's to fight your way out of that town. What did I say in Oklahoma? Where's all these people's teeth and chromosomes? No, <laughs> and then you said on air the next week, I had to wash the stupid off of me when I got home. <laughs> it's real classic, well, bro. That's fucked yeah. up. Like, well, hold on. This is what <laughs> Hopper would say. That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, so, hey, don't, let's don't talk about stupid people. Let's talk about that was a fantastic promo. That yes. Was just, that was just talking in the building. What else do you want from, from your baby faces? The Armstrongs deliver. Speaking of talking them into the building, uh, the next segment is we get get thrown to a series of clips from the matches that have led to fire on the mountain, which is, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of plugging for fire on the mountain, which makes sense. I mean, uh, the super bowl technically has already happened. So now we're, we're plugging the next, I guess, quote unquote, big show. So that's what's going on in the next segment. And then we go to a promo from Al snow and Jim Cornette with the Punisher and Unabomb. Uh, let me, let me go back to it. I think, I think it's worth Bobby. You think it's worth playing? I thought this was pretty good. Yeah, I, th I thought it was pretty good, especially for the local promos for the Fire and Mountain show. You know, uh, that's it was good for the locals. I, I agree. I agree. So let's go to Al Snow and Cornette with Punisher and Unabomb and their, their portion of the promos. Hi, Jack. All right, with me, General Cornette and members of the militia. And, of course, tonight these guys are in a tag match for the titles, and the loser of the fall leaves Smoky Mountain Wrestling. But you leave out one very important thing, Les Thatcher. I'm going to be the referee. I'm going to be the official. And there's no time limit, no disqualification. My only job is to count some shoulders down. I guarantee you that what happened a few minutes ago is not going to happen again, first of all, because Brad Armstrong... You may pull a lot of shady tricks, you may have your father out here with a baseball bat, but tonight in that battle royal, it's not going to be one at a time, punk, no. It's going to be Al Snow and Unabomb and the Punisher and Buddy Landell and Tommy Rich all in the ring at the same time with you. So I hope you have a lot of fun. But then, the thugs, Tracy Smothers and the Dirty White Boy, putting the tag team title on the line against Al Snow and Unabomb and the rock and roll and thugs going round and round about who's going to get the winner, it don't matter. Because there ain't going to be no title change once these men get the belt back around their waist. And I'm going to see to that because I'm the referee. Right, Al? You know, Jimmy... See to that, Jim. This, is, this hasn't been my night. With everything that's been going on, this just hasn't been my night. You, you know? I mean, you can feel my pain, can't you, Jimmy? I can feel your pain. You can. I mean, I can sympathize. I, and I'm sure you people out there can sympathize with me. 
But what you can't do is feel what I feel in my heart. The rejection, the resentment I have for you, Bob Armstrong. I hope to God you shrivel up and die, you old man. You cost me what I've spent 13 and a half years working for. And now I'm going to do my damnedest to get it back. And Tracy Smothers and thugs, Tony Anthony, you're going to pay for it because you were stupid enough to get in my way. I made sure that for once I had a referee who was going to call it down the middle. Now I have it my way. And thugs in Johnson City, I'm going to get my belt back. Do your damn job. The unemotional it's a good comment suggestion. from Al Snow. And of course, tonight, Hooray! it's Fire on the Mountain, Johnson yes! City's Freedom All, Dream Match Night. You won't want to miss it. Well, Chip. I thought that was good because I wanted to play it. I mean, they're talking them into the building for tonight. Bobby, what did you think? Yeah, I thought so, too. I thought it was really good. Uh, Cornette talking, talking, talking. Then Al starts off with a talk, then he gets into yell. A little bit of shades of Roddy Piper there on the uh, promo, um, talking him into the building. Uh, I thought I put down, I put it, you know, good for the local promo for that particular evening. And, uh, it, but it was very over. It was good over solid. What your heels sh should be doing. Al kind of begs away a little bit like, you know, you feel my pain. Then he just turns it on, you know, like he goes from like, he's going to be a sissy or a pussy, you know, whining to where he just starts yelling and, and really cutting a really good promo. Um, and it had a little bit of elements of everything, the yelling, the talking, but the whole thing was get your ass to the building. Talk about the two front rows. We're going to go see a good show tonight, you know. Hell yeah. Keep the stupid off of us and let us enjoy that wrestling. <laughs> Doc, your thoughts on the promo? I thought it was really good because it was a side of a, a, a slight twist in Al's personality that we really haven't seen, which is the screaming and yelling. And so we've seen cocky. We've seen angry. We've seen him calling Morton's girlfriend a bag of yeast but this seems a little bit different and serious like he's amped up and pulling up his greatest emotion right ahead of the show and i think it's real because you know sometimes when you're mad you're actually kind of calm and you keep it level-headed he's just so angry now he can't contain himself so i thought he's playing the victim here very well and doing what a heel should do. And that's what I liked about it. So good stuff. Good stuff overall. Okay. Uh, we got to, we got to, I'm going to break this up a little bit. It's going to be about two minutes on the first one and then a little bit more on the next one. But we got Chip Kessler and Les, uh, along with Tommy Noe. They throw us to a feature on the number one hillbilly, Ron Wright. So let's go to that right now. Here's the first part of it. Chip, on top of everything else tonight, Fire on the Mountain, it's the 37 years of Ron Wright, his retirement. Of course, we've talked about the Ron Wright of his wrestling days, but there's another side to Ron Wright. Indeed, Les. In fact, Ron, the king of Kingsport, has actually moved back to his native Kingsport. Let's catch up now with Ron Wright, see what he's doing today, and take a look at this feature. Ron Wright has been at different times in his 37-year career in professional wrestling, the most hated and the most beloved figure in the history of the sport in East Tennessee. After stepping out of the ring as an active wrestler due to many injuries suffered during his career, he excelled as a manager, guiding many men to the top, most notably the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony. Today, the man who earned the names the King of Kingsport and the number one hillbilly because of his wild and win-at-any-cost style prepares for his retirement from the sport he helped make famous in East Tennessee, professional wrestling. At Fire on the Mountain on August 12th in Johnson City, Ron will be honored by his friends, family, and fans in an in-ring retirement ceremony. What will life be like for the living legend after wrestling? After several years of living in North Carolina, Ron has returned home to his native Kingsport, the jewel of East Tennessee, to enjoy a life of leisure among his friends and family. Ron's wife, Teresa, has opened up Wright's Lawn and Garden Repair at 1810 East Center Street in Kingsport. Ron enjoys visiting at the shop, talking to his fans who stopped by, and it was there that Smoky Mountain Wrestling talked to Ron about his retirement and his thoughts on his long and successful career. Started. All right, I got to pause it there first because <laughs> we went from this man kicking dogs and beating beating animals and and just being the the I mean, aside from Dirty White Boy, the number one heel in the territory, 
and and now he <laughs> him and his wife they're running right lawn and garden repair in Kingsport. So, uh, Bobby, you first. It, that, that's just it. You know, here we got sweet baby face, lovable Ron. Now, what do you have? Yeah, I wrote down last week the promo was a little bit of a heel, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, you went from one to the other, so that, that's kind of what. I can't word it any better than what you did. So I'll, I'll leave it at that as like as far as now you're looking at this sweet, lovable man with just a couple of weeks of 37 years of being, you know, the number one hillbilly and the most uh, hated man or whatever, heel. But now he's getting over as a baby face. The one thing I did put, I don't know if you guys caught this or not, but uh, uh, it may be coming up when he's done the interview. It looks like he's talking into a fucking electric toothbrush. I, I caught that. I was like, tell me if you see that or not. Uh, I see it as electric toothbrush that he's talking into. But, uh, yeah, for, um, you know, Tri-Cities, uh, Kingsport, Tennessee, John City, Tennessee, Bristol, uh, what a good baby face promo they gave him. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're looking back. Uh, it's me changing those, flipping over. Um, you know, you're <laughs> – You've been a lifelong wrestling fan in East Tennessee. You probably sit there going, I hated that son of a bitch. I hate that. But you know what? I'm going down there to see him. I, yeah. Because you're a fan, you know? So it's like, I don't care that he, you know, uh, had this bloody feud with Whitey Caldwell or uh, because he uh, chiseled someone or this, that. And, and he, you hated him. It's like, you probably sit there, people going, fuck it. I'm going down to that building tonight. I'm going to see that cocksucker. I'm going to see that number one hillbilly. Um, I think it drew a lot of people in there, you know, as far as, uh, and with this promo, as you're, as you're playing it, um, I think it talked to a lot of people. Everyone's doing their job to talk to fucking people into Johnson city, Tennessee to the, uh, uh, uh freedom hall that night. Believe me. So uh, good yeah. stuff. Doc, uh, you want me to keep going or you got anything from that first part? Um, I just, I got a lawnmower that could use a little tune up. I'm thinking <laughs> about loading it up in the car and, uh, heading bring on down there and see, see what, see bring what I can do. I hope I don't get hit with a chisel when I'm rolling it in the building. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the second part of it. Cause there's some really good stuff here, you know, and again, we're never going to hear from Ron Wright again in this promotion, uh, like we will right here. Uh, this is definitely a different side of Ron Wright. Now we saw him at night of legends and they did, they honored him there and he got some cheers. So he was a baby face there, but man, here's old brother Ron who in his glory for probably the last time. So, um, uh, here it is. In Miami to wrestling at the King sport boys club here in King sport, matter of fact, and seemed like, Time repeats itself. I have two sons, a 14-year-old David Wright and my six-year-old Charlie Wright that started their amateur wrestling career this past year here at the Boys Club and certainly feels good to be back in Kingsport, Tennessee. And uh, we've also, we, when I retired, we moved my wife's business from Durham, North Carolina here to Kingsport. And uh, she has a lawn and garden repair service and a full-fledged go-kart racing business here at the uh, this location at 1810 Center Street, Kingsport, Tennessee. And uh, my wife, she's a little camera shy and don't want to be on the camera, but I'll tell you, when she goes to the cart races around here, she's not the least bit shy because she's run three races here and sat on the pole in all three of them and uh, runs up front. The big $12,000 purse they had here three weeks ago, my drivers run first, second, and fourth in that. So. A lot of the go-kart shops in this area kind of hated to see old Ron Wright come back to Tennessee because they don't like being outrun by a woman like my wife generally does. But, but I do stay here and keep her a whole lot of cutting in, keep my eye on her because she's an awful young, pretty woman, make sure nobody don't come in and run off with her. Last August, Ron was named the greatest wrestler in Knoxville history by the fans of Smoky Mountain Wrestling and claims that that was his proudest moment. But he chose the Tri-Cities for his retirement ceremony because it's like coming home. My wrestling career started right here in Kingsport, Johnson City, Bristol. And I picked uh, Johnson City right back here in East Tennessee where my career started to have my retirement ceremonies. Uh, you know, people, it's hard to believe, but I started wrestling professional when I was 16 back in the mid-50s. And that's been a long, long time. And uh, it is a real honor to be able to retire coming back to Kingsport, Johnson City at the Freedom Hall to have my retirement ceremony and give all of the fans that I've known thousands and thousands of them in my career one last opportunity to come out to the matches, shake my hand. Maybe if you bring your children, I'll give them a big old hug because I really appreciate all of the fans done for me 
in wrestling and getting me started in pro ranks right here in Tennessee. If I was able to get back in the ring for one more last match, the man that I would want to face would have to be none other than the late Whitey Caldwell, because let me tell you, I can remember back years, years, and years, hundreds and thousands of times, the bruising and the beatings that that man put on me, but I'd have to say he was one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of wrestling, and if I had that last match to have one more last match in my wrestling career, I would have to say that I would rather wrestle the late Whitey Caldwell. The Ron Wright Whitey Caldwell feud is still to this day the first thing on many East Tennesseans' minds when you mention professional wrestling. Look at the main event on any wrestling card from 1958 to 1972, and these two men were involved. The record crowds that they drew and the endurance of their rivalry will never be equaled. After Whitey's fatal auto accident in 1972, the only choice to take his place in the last match Whitey had scheduled was Ron Wright. But what wrestler of today does Ron admire? The answer, again, is not surprising. I would probably have to go with none other than the man that I trained and helped get in this business, and he reminds me more of myself, things that I'd done years ago, would be none other than the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony. Now that it comes to a close, what are Ron's thoughts about his life in wrestling, and more importantly, his life without wrestling? Being honest with you, it really can bring tears to my eye, realizing that I've had to hang it up from being uh, in such bad health, injury with arthritis, and first one thing and another. Uh, but if I had it all to live over again, there's not one thing that I've ever done in professional wrestling that I wouldn't do again. But I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it all, even the beatings, the cuttings, the broke bones, the broke ribs, the broke noses, broke cheekbones, black eyes, you name it. Uh, I can think of over all of this, and it just brings me trembling knowing the injuries and stuff that I've had in wrestling, but I'd have to say if, if I had my life to live over again, I'd probably do it all exactly right to the T the way I'd done it. Just want to thank all of the fans how I appreciated your support in the years, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing y'all at my retirement ceremonies coming up here in Johnson City, Tennessee. Fans, we are interrupting. So, Doc, let's. Uh, I want to. I'm going to get your thoughts and Bobby's thoughts. But do you remember how old Ron Wright was here? Fifty. What? Fifty-seven? Maybe fifty-six. Fifty-seven. He does not. <laughs> he looks like he's twenty years older than that, but. Uh, what a babyface promo right there. I don't even yeah, call it a promo. So, what a babyface so profile. Let me shut up. Let me start this the right way. Um, for Bobby's point, that is the old Smoky Mountain tape the mic to the pen and let him talk. Right, Mike? Yeah, that's um, what Tommy Noe said to me was that's a lapel mic that when Jim went to the like local electronic store, Cornet went to the local electronic store, Tommy Noe told me that the guy didn't, they didn't have like a regular mic to plug into his camcorder. So he's like, this is the guy tells Cornette, this is all we have. And Corny's, you know how Corny is, Bobby. Corny's like, ah, fuck it. I got to make it work anyway. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Corny, kid, just, just give me some bitch. I'll make it work. Fuck. God damn. You know, so, and that's what he did. He, he literally, from what Tommy Noe said, and I've heard Corny say it now too, they taped that shit to a fucking pin, and that's how they did some of these promos where they weren't, you know, on set yeah. or whatever else. So that's what you're right, Doc. That's what that is. Go ahead, continue. Doc. Uh, yeah. So the great thing about this is, you know, here's the thing: if if there wasn't the lineage of him and that that history with him, this would be some bullshit, boring ass old man talking. But because he comes wrapped in the package of those 37 years or whatever it is, this is fascinating stuff because it cuts such a sharp contrast from our public, you know, his public persona. But he's everything you want him to be because he is a, I mean, he's a hillbilly, man. He's running a, a mechanic shop and his wife races go-karts. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, I get it that it's a work, but sometimes it's, you know, I think, I think Bobby said this last week or earlier in the episode. I don't know. These all run together. I'm kind of drunk already. 
it's a work, but it's a, it's not it's a it's a work, but it's not a work. Yeah, as much as business is a work, it's a shoot. It's a shoot, and for Ron to be this way and to talk this way, it is such compelling. I mean, I want to know what's on the notes behind him on the, that he's paying attention to there at his desk. He is one hundred percent who I want him to be. I I can't agree more. I, I wish wish he was still alive, not only for himself, but God, can you imagine getting that guy on this show? Well, <laughs> I, I, my first round draft pick is Tim Horner, but what you know? I'm, Stay tuned. I'm that may happen. Stay tuned. It's not out the question. And you're okay. stuck with fucking Bobby Blaze. You yeah. motherfuckers. <laughs> you motherfuckers. Hey, 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 Harry got... man right on the fucking show. Pin me, pay me. Fuck <laughs> <Thank laughs> you, I'm out of here. <laughs> we, got a, we, got a, we have a Smoky Mountain heavyweight champion and the guy that effectively retired to beat the champ title. Hey. We're lucky. <laughs> We're lucky. Uh, Bobby, what did you think about uh, old brother Ron here? I thought it was great, man. Um, again, I, I'm glad you told me that's what it was. The uh, the pen wrapped up, the microphone wrapped in a pen. God, I thought, is that an electric toothbrush is what it looked like? I knew it just didn't like your typical <laughs> mic. Uh, but seriously, I kind of guessed on his age as well. And I had him between 55 and 57. And that was being generous. But I was like, fuck. You know, um, he had a 37-year career that started in the 50s. The guy's just over. And I think that's what he delivers is just kind of like um, – it, the believability factor, like he he didn't say anything uh, outlandish or crazy. He just pretty much spoke the truth like a straight shoot, man. And again, it goes back to what I said earlier. I think of someone sitting around watching that program uh, over the last couple of weeks, following it, uh, maybe their son or, or, or grandson's watching it, and they see this, their asses go down to that building too going, man, I remember when he bought so-and-so, like it's not to be redundant, like I said earlier, but they're going to be like, I'm going to go and see that old bastard, you know, and, and also – uh, from a human perspective, I think a lot of people uh, can disconcern herself with uh, a healed baby face or the whole uh, disbelief of things. They say, you know what, man, I remember seeing him and he was a, they might not say heel, they might say he was an old prick or a mean wrestler or a bad wrestler or whatever, but they have said to themselves too, I'm going to go down there and see him. Good for him. I'm going to go down, what a fucking career the guy's had. I'm going to go down and watch old Ron right tonight, you know, um, and see him and get an autograph maybe. Because I think the fans know this is probably one of the last times they're going to see him, uh, the regular fans that tuned into the program, you know. I think they're like, okay, uh, his run, his run's coming to an end. Uh Dotto with Smoky Mountain, but also with, you know, he's just going to be down here selling lawnmowers now um, and not in the ring wrestling or managing or anything else. So uh, pretty good stuff, man. Pretty good stuff. Powerful, powerful. I think uh, one last thing. I think it's amazing in 1995 at 57 years old. He said he had a 14-year-old and a 6-year-old. Yeah, I caught that too. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Doc, any other thoughts as we as we close out the Ron Wright chapter? No, oh, fantastic stuff. And when I say close out the Ron Wright chapter, I mean, we obviously know he, he's been gone from the promotion as a performer for a while. We saw him at Night of Legends. We've seen a few things here and there, but uh, this is, I guess you can call it a swan song, if anything. I mean, they're literally showing him in his shop, the lawnmower garden repair, and I'm with Doc. I want to load up the vehicle and bring my lawnmower up there and uh, get it fine-tuned because it's old Brother Ron's shop, and that's that. So, uh all right, and honestly, if you're um, if you go back into our older shows, they're still available on the free feed. And Bo James did long form stuff with us on Ron Wright uh, from about three years ago, so don't sleep on that stuff. Bo James knew him, talked to him. If you want to know more about Ron Wright, go back and listen to those old shows with Bo James. If you're a patron, they actually should be on the patron Patreon feed at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. When I say on the Patreon feed, without the NWA reviews, you can get the uh, full Ron Wright interviews, and that's that. Man, uh, he, he handed the Koloffs a chain in like episode three or four and rolled away. <laughs> that was so glorious. And now here we are years later and closer to death and he, he's a, still a huge part of the promotion yep so let's keep going because interrupting ron wright's last i don't want to call it interview sit down profile is chip kessler with an update from the super bowl of wrestling and i need to play it it's short here it is Fans, we are interrupting this program, which was taped before the Super Bowl of Wrestling in Knoxville, to bring you this special report. 
Now, as you would expect, a lot did occur at the Super Bowl. Three titles changed hands, including Brad Armstrong beating Billy Jack Haynes for the USWA Championship. The Undertaker made his appearance from the dark side, and Nature Boy Buddy Landell was foiled in his attempt to win the World Wrestling Federation Intercontinental title from Shawn Michaels due to some mismanagement by General Jim Cornette. Due to our production deadline, we'll have that for you next week. But fans, come without on. a doubt, the most shocking news to come out of the Super Bowl was word that the Rock and Roll Express have split up and that Ricky Morton is no longer with Smoky Mountain Wrestling. This stems from an incident that was taped for broadcast for today's show between the Rock and Roll Express and PG-13. But fans, watch what occurs after the match between Ricky Morton and Tracy Smothers. Okay, so stop there. I, we're going to get into Ricky and... We're going to get into this whole thing with the rock and roll in a second. But, Doc, any thoughts um, from the news that Chip Kessler broke there from the Super Bowl? I We talk about this on Saturday night. We talk about it here. I don't like you telling me what the matches were, especially if I'm not going to see them tonight. Let me watch it. And, I, I mean, I want to think that Buddy's going to win this thing. I, I know he's probably not, but I want to watch it with that. Maybe he does it. Maybe he can do it after that promo he cut. And you just told me next week I'm going to see him lose. Well, I don't maybe like you should have went down there and saw the match live in person. Look, you shut your damn whore mouth. I'm trying to tell it's you. Call it a tease, asshole. It's not a tease. A tease would be that we're going to show the match next week. They gave away the farm here. In 1995, you still wanted to see the match next week. It didn't ruin nothing for you. You're just an old fart that's 45 years old and can't get your head out your ass. I guess that's it. Whatever, pal. Tommy Rich. Bobby, don't listen to this idiot. Uh, you got anything from Chip Kessler's uh, update right there breaking in? No, um, being there at that time, just at the Super Bowl, of course, I just was like, um, probably people just got through watching the Ron Wright. You got to make a transition, and there's your good transition. Like, you know, throw it to Chip because we've got an emergency update, and he starts filling in on what took place at the uh, Super Bowl. Um, I'm in between on giving away the finishes because I want to see it on TV, or I, I should have been at the building. So it's um, it could be half you know, six one way, half a dozen another. It, it, at that time, I, I, I still like, you know, with what this with this current NWA, I don't even want to know the fucking finishes till I watch the program. But uh, if you're going to tease me with it, I want to see it. You know, that's it. I, I'd rather not know the finish, though. Even though you might know who won, Doc, you don't know the finish, okay? You didn't watch it yet, so they can still tease it that way. No, no internet, no maybe dirt sheet or this or that. That and maybe you know your neighbor went and and took one of those front row tickets and and did come back and tell you that you know, uh, but he did get beat, but he doesn't say how. So um, I, I get, I I'm get with it, you know. I, I get that, but my point is, if I lived, you know, if I'm a kid, I'm 11, I'm 12, and I live 100 miles away, we talked about this. That might as well have been the other side of the earth, even then in 95 without the internet and everything else. If I can get the full effect of what I missed, I sure, I may not have got, been able to go to that show, but I sure won't miss it when it comes to my town. Okay. Mama, mama, mama. Mama. Rasslin's coming, mama. Can we go? Boy, get your ass out of here. Did you hear something like that, Mike? All the time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, but, you little bastard. Get okay. out of my face. I mean, I'm going to watch this shit next week. Don't get right. me wrong. I'm excited. I, I just, I love sitting there for the 11 minutes or whatever thinking, I don't know how, but I want Buddy to pull this off and then being disappointed when he does. All right. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Let me just Let's ask you this, Doc. And this, I, and this. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't think you gave too much away. Yes, you wanted to see it on TV and what have you, but it's like no different than saying uh, just uh, due to the area, we'll say uh, uh, the Braves. They come on, you didn't watch the game. They say, well, the Braves lost today in a, in a close one uh, on a news thing. And then when you watch the actual news at 11 o'clock, uh, just kind of to date this for, for 95 or so, 
then you're going to watch the walk-off homer as to how they lost or whatever. So I still don't think the fans are not going to tune in. You see what I'm saying? Even though you yeah. gave it away to Buddy Lost, you don't know how Buddy lost. So I still think the people that were there got the effect of it. But also, if you weren't there and you hear what uh, Chip just now said, you're still wanting to watch it next week on TV because you do want to see the actual finish. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just kind of comparing it as a sport. Like, even though you know that team lost, how did they lose? You'll watch the highlights of that. Why are we talking about this like it's real? No, um, <laughs> no. Uh, it's all a fucking work. <laughs> I, I think about it like this. I think the story that the rock and roll broke up was enough to actually carry the whole thing, but whatever. Uh, you know what? That's a good point, too. If you just brought that up, that's an excellent point. You don't have to bring up, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Brad, went, Brad winning the USWA belt that didn't wasn't that relevant uh, to that. Also, you you could have left out the Buddy Landell with the, uh, but he's one of your bigger stars in the in for the company sure. too. So, but I see what you're saying. You could have left those two tags out of there and just put, hey man, fuck the Rock and Roll Express. That's big news. They broke up. You're right. Okay. Look at that shirt. Well, speaking of the Rock and Roll Express breaking up, uh, I'm gonna fast forward now because what happens is we get led to. Uh, the ring in in Knoxville for a, a startling announcement, as we're told. So I'm going to go to it right now, and we're going to hear what what went down. And yes, Bobby, we want to know your thoughts, and we understand maybe there's things you can't say, but we want to know what you <laughs> thought about all of this. So let's go to it now. A startling announcement about the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, it's a sm- it's the house mic from the building, so some of it may not be the easiest to hear, but uh, hopefully you can you can understand it. Here it is. And Les, as we look down the aisle, I see Robert Gibson, Look and I see Commissioner thing. Bob Armstrong, and I wonder what the commissioner is really doing here at the moment. Obviously, something has been changed, and uh, well, both are getting in the ring. Now, I know it's not Bob Armstrong and Robert Gibson against the Thugs, but here's the commissioner. but to terminate Ricky Morton's bookings for matches until this matter is settled. And now, folks, I believe Robert Gibson has a few words to say. I called Ricky Morton. And I told Ricky Morton that the jealousy between us, Tracy, and Tony has gone too far. Not only is it affecting us, it's affecting our families. So I suggest to Ricky Morton to come down here tonight Let's go for the title. Win, lose, or draw. Let's bury the hatchet and shake hands. He told. <laughs> the ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Morton told me, he said, Robert, he said, you take the Rock and Roll Express and stick it up your ass. Okay? That's all I got to say, man.
Tracy Smothers trying to compose himself before talking. Robert, it's just a big mess, man. I'll shake your hand anytime, but I love you, man. Well, you know, we had an emotional, wait a minute, I told you we had an emotional uh, confrontation, but look at this. Here's the general. What is he doing here? Why hey, does he have to get involved? This is a great Ricky Lake show. <laughs> it would bring a tear to a glass eye, but we got a problem. We still don't have no tag team title match now, do we? So I got a suggestion. I suggest that if you two punks are scared, like maybe his partner is, then maybe you might want to defend the belts against a couple of members of my militia. Now I got a couple of guys in the back that's members of the militia that would just love to come out here and take the tag team title if you ain't yellow, scared, dog, coward. Well, General Loudmouth, I tell you what. Me and this man right here will take on anybody in your militia that you have. All you got to do is drag their sorry butts down the aisle, crawl in the ring, and we'll defend the Smoky Mountain Tag Team title. Well, I was thinking you were just stupid enough to do that because I got a little something arranged. Mr. Director, hit music please and at that point the heavenly bodies come down to the ring but before we talk about that uh doc i i kind of want to throw it to bobby because i think bobby probably has a lot to say about this uh, or maybe not doc well, you I, yeah i want to get out of the way here i just want to point out one thing that i think i heard was that the two broads involved were named angela and andrea which I just, I can't, I'm going to start making a mental picture of those two women and the fight while Bobby tells us what really happened. <laughs> I don't know nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you Bobby, know, Bobby, 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 like real quick before. If it, if, if, um, if it was, I don't know, 15 to 17 years earlier, those two broads' names would have been Barbara and Ann. But whatever. Uh, Bobby, one one thing before you tell us something, I I, I want to point something out that way I don't forget. When Tracy tells Robert, "I'm sorry, man, I love you. This is all a big mess." That was a fucking 150 percent shoot. Like he oh, was yeah. heartfelt. Was meant sh- that. That was the most real thing we've seen in 185 episodes. Yeah, he he meant he meant that based on what I understand from the circumstances that led to everything. But uh, Bobby, say everything you need to say about this. You. I say you were there, meaning you were at the Super Bowl. You weren't in the car when the fight happened or whatever. Um, go ahead. You were at the Super Bowl of wrestling um, in anything you know from. I mean, you were friends. You're still friends with Ricky Robert yeah. and, and, and all these guys, Tracy, Dirty White Boy. So your thoughts on all this? Well, um, just to say, I'll say this. The um, I was glad that Bullet read the paper. Uh, it made sense the way he did it that way to terminate Ricky. Um the I thought that's the best that Roberts ever spoken on TV ever. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's the most he's ever said. But he was very clear. Uh, very he got over really good. And I was going to say the same with that when Tracy said, you know, hey, this is just because Roberts said it's affect our families, which it was because shit was happening for real. And mm-hmm. um, and Tracy saying that was the one hundred percent shoot. That was just you know Tracy being Tracy, like man, it's just a mess. I love you. I'll shake your hand anytime. Uh, you know, I had seen. Uh, the the uh, ladies, I had known Andrea for at this point probably two and a half years, maybe two years, two and a half. Um, always got along with Andrea just fine, no, no heat there whatsoever. Uh, 
cool person, whatever, you know, she's with Ricky, blah, blah, blah. The, the other girl started coming around, and I don't mean it's disrespectful because I'm not really sure if she was a stripper or a rat or both, okay? But she did start coming to some of the shows, and there was some tension there, not with just with her, with some other people too. Um, just kind of this arrogance, like I have the right to be here and go back to something you said either uh, uh, last episode or this one. It's kind of like a little... Uh, Almost like a little family spat, if you will, when when Ricky's toes, uh, white boy, don't let the door hit you in the ass kind of thing. When it's that interview, there was some there was some tension at the gimmick tables, you know, because I'd be up there uh, with the person I was with at that time, and then uh, uh, Ricky and Robert would be up there, and Andrew would be up there, and then of course Tracy would be up there, and a, a lot of times. Uh, Tracy just didn't have someone to sell stuff or watch it, and my ex would. But uh, at this point, this chick started coming around, and while she was around up there, she just kind of like, uh, I won't say bullied, but just kind of like made herself known that I'm 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 part of this, like just step right in, you know, kind of thing. And I don't think it set well for a lot of people, not just, uh, and I don't know what happened with, with uh, Andrea and her as to this and that, but there was some tension there for sure, man. And then I just remember uh leaving and then the next day uh hearing something on the news or uh, later that evening hearing something on the news that ricky had gotten arrested there was a fight and then the next day hearing like no it's a shoot man uh the two girls got in a fist fight in the fucking car and this and that and that's pretty much i just kind of stayed out of it because it, it was getting messy so the rest of the stuff i could tell you this or that would just be be hearsay so i don't have any say dirty or leaky or trash talk or uh hollywood minute for you involve anything back other than what took place it did get messy and it it was it was it was it was hurting the business you know because ricky was over there and he's not making some bookings um you know i just say it was real heat with each other and um that they had to do what they had to do uh to keep the show going you know they uh, you know, terminate Ricky. Like I said, uh, uh, it was in all the newspapers and all the local. It, it uh, through that Tri Cities, it was on. You know, Knoxville and John City News and uh, newspapers and and news broadcast. You know that there was, it was that big of a story. They put it on the local news, not just you know they knew it wasn't a work. Let's say that because people were arrested and there was uh, lawsuits filed and this and that. And that's really about all I can give you. I know you're probably looking for a lot more dirt than that, but I'll say this: you know, they both was really good looking women. Uh, very classy women, uh, as far as when they when they were around uh, the gimmick tables. But the one, uh, the one with Tracy, the uh, Angela girl, uh, she just come in with an arrogance around her, like you know, I'm I'm better than you, if that makes sense. Uh, not saying it was a little clickish, because but everyone else there had already known each known each other for years and traveled with each other for years. And you just throw that one person in, um, and maybe anything else in there you want in that mix. I don't know because I don't know you know what was involved and what wasn't uh speaking of drug sex alcohol rock and roll whatever I'm, I'm not saying i'm just saying but her arrogance came in um and it showed and it was a lot of heat and tension right away when she started coming around the shows um because she had this i'm better than you arrogance and i have the right to be here arrogance and i'm with I'm with him. Do you know who I'm with? Kind of thing, you know, yeah. uh, that that kind of arrogance. And I'll leave it at that as to what happened there. I don't fucking know. And now, you know, I don't really care at this point, but I know it did hurt, and it was real, and it did hurt the business. Okay, so a couple of things to to pick up and and kick this can down the road as resolution goes. Uh, we all know Tracy is uh, currently battling cancer. I will tell you that um, everything is in 2020. Okay. Uh, because I listened to Morton's podcast this past week and Tracy Smothers was on there and there was a whole lot of I love you and I love you. Yeah. And they did talk about Smoky Mountain and they didn't really talk about this. And that's OK. I mean, we're here just for a small part of that. I will say that this thing took place and, and once it got resolved, it was fuck it, it's water under the bridge kind of thing. I do know that. Shortly thereafter, I, I was back on the road. Uh, even when Smoky Mountain shut down, I was on a show with Tracy and Ricky and both, and I know within a short amount of time, it was all forgiven and forgotten and fucked. You know what I'm saying? So, um, shit happens, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, but this was, I mean, the the, uh, the thing that, that Bobby said that's real that was I noticed here was, we all noticed Tracy, man. Tracy looked like he was really upset by it. Gibson was fantastic. Uh, Bob guided us through it, and that's his role as the commissioner. And then you come out the other side, and this is where this is the complex piece of the thing that we talked about last week. So we don't pay this gimmick off, but 
this is the time where they made chicken salad out of chicken shit and down come the heavenly bodies. The gigolo was back, smooth up in you, rides <laughs> again. And yeah, and so we are in business. There's a lot going on right here. Um, yes, real quick, I got something I want to say about the whole Ricky and and Tracy thing. So, um, we're getting to the end of the Patreon video at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. So, if you want to listen to the rest of this, download the free show, download the show on the free feed, the regular BTT feed. Not that I wanted to say that, but you make a great point. Um, Doc. You know, I've heard Bo James talk about this uh, at, in length and at depth about this situation. Bo thought it was a work at first. He said he didn't. He realized it wasn't a work when the night of the Super Bowl, he actually called Ricky's house at like five o'clock or something, and Ricky answered the phone on the first ring or six o'clock, whatever it was. He's like, "That's when I realized it wasn't a work." And without getting too detailed in um, Bo's thoughts on this, which Bo has got great thoughts on this whole situation after talking to all of them, um, Bo said basically Tracy got screwed. Like he was literally trying to be the peacemaker of this whole quote unquote fight. I'll, call it that and in the long run tracy was the one who trying to play peacemaker between this whole thing was basically caught in the middle of it and there was no fault of his and all of this stuff that happened and like bobby here's what, well and here's what i want to know did anybody consider getting these two broads in the ring and letting them cat fight for money I guess that's all on the table until you start having lawsuits. That's the problem. Right. Yeah. Litigation stops all that, but you know, I, 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 the, the, I just always think that the let's sell this the in world. a ring, brother. Yeah, <laughs> let's sell some tickets. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what you know. And then the other thing that I I was thinking is the old Kevin Nash line is keep your broads away from the business. Bobby, what do you think about that statement? Because I totally agree with it. You got to, yeah. I, 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 I had a, my, my, the girlfriend I was with for most of my time in the late nineties, early 2000s, I kept her ass away from the little mud show indie stuff that I did. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, Bobby, your thoughts on keeping your broad yeah, away from the business. I, I try to keep mine away from the business as much as possible. Um, I saw too much other stuff going on, seen too much stuff going on, new shit went on. Um, I the brought mine around for when they put the title on me, we did a tour with me and her and a new baby, and I just got that title. So for one month, that was, you know, she went around with me as far as, you know, to, to kind of show off her and a baby kind of thing to get me over even more. But what that does is bury you because now the rats and I never forget this. Robert Gibson said, you're fucked now. And he said, but they would they revealed Tommy rich being married on TV. It killed his gimmicks. And I swear to you when you're there, cause all them rats think they still got a chance with you, even if you don't. Uh, but when they see you there, if your wife and your baby, they don't seem to come up to your fucking line anymore. So your sales do go down. It does hurt you. But, but yeah, uh, I had brought mine around early on uh, for a couple shows, and I was like, oh, fuck, I've already, I have already know the rule. And I just like, okay, for now, and she did stay home. So that's what I did, kept her away. It's probably 80 to 85% of the time, kept her away, except for the one time uh, that I needed her on the road to, to do what Cornette had asked me to do, which basically go around and do like a little tour, let them see the baby and let them, you know, family man, whatever, we're the baby faithful presenting here. So, which did kill my gimmick self for that month. <laughs> no, so, I hear yeah, you. Keep, keep your broad away, really. It's just too much shit, man, that goes on. Um, and you could have the best woman with the best intentions. Uh, you could be the best guy with the best intentions. But uh, sometimes temptations, man, uh, you know, lead me not to temptations because I can fucking find them on my own, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> well, and, 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 and so, first of all, it makes your – it really hampers your, your rat banging. And yeah. then also – as Mike and I talk about with Harper all the time, nobody can work themselves into a shoot more than a set of broads together. God. <laughs> so I mean, I think I think you got a bunch of guys who are like, it's a it's a it's a work, it's a work, it's a work, cafe brother, and then you put some broads in there and they can't they don't know how to work. Doc, I mess with you all the time because you you are the king of not being able to no sell. You you your no sell game is weak. But let me tell you something. Abroad has the worst no-sell game of any species on this planet. 
A broad cannot, I'm sorry, women cannot know. They get fired up, swole up in the chest. I mean, promos ready to be cut at almost anything. Doc's no sell game is weak, but it ain't nothing compared to a woman. Most women cannot no sell things. They get fired up at the littlest thing. Just look at them with reality TV. That shit's the biggest work on the planet, and they work themselves into a lather over it. <laughs> it's the, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, and they believe, and they keep going back for more. Her, I can't believe he gave her the rose. I'm like, you believe this bullshit? This ain't real. This is fake. And like, no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's on television. There's a fucking executive producer. It is fake. It is hokey horse shit, fake stuff. And you suck up to it like it's real. It's fake. Stop. Stop taking a, a bite of the apple. You're you're like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> But and, they, and you're I mean, gonna and you're gonna say, well, Ma Broad doesn't watch The Bachelorette. Yeah, but she's over on HGTV, or she's well, over on this, or she's they're getting worked. That's actually worse than some of their actual reality <laughs> TV. That, that, that has see, actually and when I, for the rest right, of us. Right, that, and that's what, when I say get worked themselves into a shoot, I don't even mean like like true reality TV. I'm talking HGTV type stuff. I've literally watched my broad sit there and watch that stuff and think it's real. I'm like, this is not real life. This guy like builds toothbrushes for a living. He don't make 800 grand a year doing that. <laughs> it's fake. It's phony. Like, so anyway, they work themselves into a shoot. Not to go off on a tangent, but Doc's right. Um, no one works themselves into a shoot more than women. And, and, uh, Bobby, I appreciate you not like, you know, sl we weren't looking for you to sling mud. Um, honestly, like no. I said, I've heard, I've heard Bo James's take on it, yeah. uh, which is pretty good. And after talking to like, you know, Bo, Bo knows obviously Tracy and, and Ricky really well. And he's, he's right down the middle on things. And at the end of the day, Bo says, man, Tracy really got screwed in this one because he didn't do anything. He was trying to be peacemaker and here he is, ends up in a goddamn lawsuit and getting arrested and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, and I, it sucks and for Tracy. Thing, I say, you know, Andrea was already there. She had been around a lot, especially those shows in that area, because she lived in that area, and so it's easy for her to make those shows. So people were used to her being around too. The other broad had come in. It was just kind of like, now you got me calling them broads. The other girl <laughs> come in. It's kind of like, like I said, she kind of come up with a bit of arrogance to her. But uh, yeah, I think Tracy was trying to play peacemaker, and also, you know, I think this happens a lot. Trying to go back to what you say about. The, the girl's getting herself worked up into a tizzy or whatever. Um, the, guys, you know, we're guys. We could start having that fucking argument and get up in each other's face and this and that. And, and But once it's over, pretty much like, you know what, fuck it, it's over. Uh, I said what I needed to say. You said what you need to say. Or maybe even punches were, were thrown or whatever. Uh, but when it's over, it's pretty much fucking settled. You know where you stand with that person. You're going to shake your hand and tell them you love them. Or you're like, fuck you. You know what? You got the best of me. I'm not, I just don't want to hang out with you anymore. I'm not, we're not friends. Whatever. But them fucking girls, they will let that shit go on and on and on and bring it up over and over and over. Where you're like, that was two fucking weeks ago. But you see a guy's like, hey, man, you know what happened last week? Let's just fucking forget that. I love you. I'll shake your hand. You know, it's this shit's done. Frogs can't do that. They will bring that shit back up no matter what it is and at the most inappropriate times. And uh, once we went to the lawsuits, there, there, nothing they could have done. They could have put it back in the ring. Not that those girls wanted to get in the ring or whatever. They couldn't have brought it back because once those you have to be checked out and looked into and, and, and everything else, and I would imagine uh, neither one of them broads wanted to fight each other in the ring. They, they, they were willing to fight for free out in a fucking parking lot in a car somewhere. So. Uh, <laughs> Business is business. Uh, let's try to make some money. No, they're like, life is life. She's a bitch. She's a bitch. Let's fight, you know? So um, I don't know if you wrangle out back in, you know? Yeah, no, I, I don't think you can wrangle it back in. You're, 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 you're spot on. Doc, anything else before we move on? That's why you don't want to work with live animals or broads <laughs> that don't know how to work. <laughs> Um, and like, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it is what it is. And Tracy kind of got screwed in this whole thing. And, uh, um, yeah. like it, it, it was messed up, but you know, as we're going long in this episode and we got to start wrapping things up soon, uh, we'll keep going though. We got the thugs versus the heavenly bodies, as you heard from corny who made the announcement. So the bodies are back and they're going to take on the thugs for the smoking mountain wrestling tag team titles. I got a couple of notes and I'll throw it to, to Bobby and see what he thinks. Dr. Tom is busted open very bad, and we're going to see a spot shortly. Um, 
it's not on a Patreon video because we ran out of time, uh, where Dr. Tom uh, takes a, or, or I'm getting it backwards, it's followed by this, it's a unique table spot. Smothers goes to pile drive Dr. Tom on a table, and they literally go through the table. It's 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 great. It's coming up. We're watching it here together. Um, if you want to see it on YouTube, it's at thirty seven zero eight is where it starts to happen. So uh, the long story short, the bodies win the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Tag Team Titles. Uh, Bobby, I'll throw it to you, man. Uh, this was a nice surprise, even with everything that went down with Morton and the girlfriends and Tracy. But the bodies win the tag team titles. Your thoughts? Yeah, I thought it was great. A great surprise. One of those times when. Um, you know, like uh, what'd you say, Doc? Turned chicken shit and chicken salad there. Uh, I think the fans got it was a hell of a good show already. Um, top to bottom, cars fucking stacked. And of course, you know you're wanting to see the thugs and the yeah. rock and roll. But then those fucking uh, I know it just now popped for fucking the table spot. Um, did you got this match, man? The fucking heavenly bodies are back. Instant heat, boom, dun dun dun. dun. Frankenstein comes on. They go out there, and I guess Tom took fucking thirty or forty fucking headshots in that top turnbuckle, bloody bloody mess. And then they do a table spot outside, which I thought was great because I thought it was like a homage to to fucking uh, uh, Randy Savage doing Ricky Morton back in the uh, the USWA or or whatever Memphis territory. But they do a, a back Backdrop, buddy, uh, uh, white boy backdrops uh, Tom over into the table, and then fucking Tracy gets up there and pile drives him through it. It's, he's a bloody mess. I, I, I thought it was great. I, I thought, you know, for this show, the Super Bowl wrestling, it fucking delivered. You know, the, the you can say, who booked this shit? We know who booked it, but by God, they booked it right. When you don't have the rock and roll out there, but you have the heavenly bodies come back, and you get this kind of a match of these four guys uh, with the blood, with the tables, um, it's just, uh, uh, man, Del Rey uh, out there, they're all just busting their ass. Tom's busting his ass. You know, all four of them are. It's just really, really good. Um, and, of course, the finish, uh, do I give it away with the uh, finish or not? Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Bobby. The, okay, the ether finish, you know, fucking how classic is that? So it had everything in it, you know, it, to make your new chance to get over. I think uh, once you see this match, it's like, okay, could the Rock and Roll Express and the Thugs had to give a match to, to make this show? You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, uh, I don't know if they could have. I know they could have had a hell of a match. The buildup had been there and this and that, but now – uh, this this is this probably is even better to be honest with you than the rock and roll versus the thugs. It's the thugs versus the heavenly bodies and uh, great finishes with the ether. Great finishes with the table. You know, going Tom going through the table and the heavenly bodies are back in Smoky Mountain. I don't know if it could have been topped honestly. I, I thought it's great, great. I'm with you, Bobby. Hashtag over. Um, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like to say, you know, everything that went down with Morton and Tracy and the girlfriends and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, you, you can't predict that the audible they call with bringing the bodies in and the way they finish this match and the whole table spot with Tracy and Dr. Tom. And then we get the finish with Corny. I, I know I bought uh, Doc chuckled right there and I'm going to go back to it so we can we can watch it again. When Corny comes in with that goddamn ether and the way he sp Corny is great because there's 5,000 people in this building and he needs everybody up high to see what's going on. So he holds that oh, rag yeah. up high and waves that can of spray and makes sure everybody can see him lathering it up when spraying it with ether. And then he, he damn near kills Dirty White Boy. Tony <laughs> Anthony's out cold from it. That was fabulous stuff. Great finish. Bodies win. Unexpected. I, look, they they turned chicken shit into chicken salad. That's for damn sure. They 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 made something out of a bad situation. Give them credit. Corny throws the ether towel in the audience so that they can smell the ether. Maybe knock one of them out. Who knows? I don't know. But Doc, your thoughts? Anytime there's ether, I get happy. <laughs> uh, it's it's even even better than a fireball. The only thing that Corny did in this promotion that was better than the ether was the uh, Iron Man hour-long match where he brought out the oxygen tank for Dr. Tom and gave him some oxygen in the last couple of minutes so that he would be refreshed to go in there and win the match. The, Dr. Tom's dead. Look at him there. He's a fucking mess, which is fantastic. The thing that sold a pile driver on top of the pile driver in the table is the backdrop into it at first that didn't break the table. And then when they went through, they went through. In they a didn't break the table. They went through it. 
Yeah, right. they went it through it hard. They went they through the table. They didn't perforate it on a cut line. It was like, holy shit. That I mean, you look at Tracy's face coming up. He's like, fuck. So, you know, obviously these four guys are supreme workers, can get the job done in an entertaining fashion. You lay in that all over the storyline that's already going around. You put in ether. You make it bloody. What else do you want, man? Yeah, you gave it all to him right there. I don't know. But this was great stuff, man. That's I mean, all that's I can top, say. That's top shelf stuff. I mean, four great workers telling a great story, beating the shit out of each other, and an ether fuck finish is new champs. What the hell? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we'll keep going. Uh, great stuff. This is a lot of fun, man, this episode as we get near the end. We get a fire on the mountain plug, and they absolutely announce a new match that's going to happen. It is a grudge match because now we've got the Heavenly Bodies. So now we're going to put the Heavenly Bodies in with the thugs for the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Tag Team titles because, you know, we had an unexpected switch here. So, hey, let's you The bodies are here. They're champs now. Got to have a rematch. So uh, the money's always in the rematch. So we get the, the thugs and let's the run Heavenly it, Bodies. Let's run it back. Let's run it let's, back. you damn right. Let's run it back. And so from there, give me a second. Let me go to the, the closing promo because we do have a close to this show. We got one more promo before we get out of here. Uh, we are going to get Cornette, who's going to recap what happened at the Super Bowl of Wrestling. Uh, let's go to that right now. A Super Bowl of Wrestling is history, and I guess, Mr. Cornette or General Cornette, you have to be very proud of yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm real proud of myself, and I'm proud of the militia because the militia marched at the Super Bowl. Look at it. Al Snow, the new Midwest heavyweight champion, he beat Marty Jannetty. Tommy Rich and Terry Gordy triumphed. The Punisher triumphed tonight. And the Heavenly Bodies, the new Smoky Mountain Tag Team Champions. Yeah, the- what, what, did, what was that you used tonight on the Dirty White Boy, by the way? Uh, chlorine, ether, it, no, it smelled. No, well, no, you idiot. What, what is the matter with you? You're obviously blind, deaf, and dumb. The idiot Dirty White Boy, he's a drunk alcoholic from Bucks North, Tennessee. He was drinking that homemade moonshine. He got drunk and fell flat on his face. It's not my fault that the guy has a little problem, if you know what I mean. Speaking of people with problems like that in their past, the only person I'm upset about is my top lieutenant. I cannot believe it. Buddy Landell lets me down. Buddy Landell gets beat right in the middle of the ring. I can't believe the amount of mistakes he made in that match. I can't believe that after I've come out here and promised these people that he's not the Intercontinental Champion. I can't believe it. I can't believe where, it. Where is Buddy Landell? Hey, hey, hold on just a minute, man. I had Shawn Michaels beat right in the middle of the ring, and you're the reason why that I lost the match, not me. Let me tell you something, buddy. You better go back and you better study your training manual. You don't talk to me like that because I'm a general. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't win a title at Fire on a Mountain, then you're going to get busted to buck private you understand me let me tell you something i know that i'm going to win the belt at fire on the mountain you know why because you're not going to be there what what do you mean buddy all right fans next week here on smoky mountain wrestling highlights from the super bowl of wrestling we'll see so we get a tease there at the end of hmm we'll have to see what happens buddy and jimmy seem to be at odds and to bobby's point earlier well, we know Buddy seems to have lost, but we don't know how it all went down, and there's some intrigue there. Doc, your thoughts on this before we throw it to Bobby? I mean, they gave away the results earlier, but shit, I guess I better make sure I'm in front of the TV <laughs> next week to see how this shit turns out. I mean, shit, I got to know what happens. I mean, obviously, Jim did something to make Buddy mad, and I want to see what that is, right? Two I agree. Uh, yeah. Bobby, your thoughts? Now, I thought it was great how Cornette uh, fed up to it when he when he said, you know, white boy got drunk or was, was a drunk, or, but he goes uh, something about speaking of people with problems in the past, he kind of tips his hand up there and eluding to Buddy, and then Buddy comes in on it. You know, I thought, okay, that's that's genuine, it's real, and and there's uh, even though it's a war team there, it's a it's a good moment for for that to take place because you know, as you know, there's uh, Buddy lost the title. We don't know how yet. Now you definitely want to tune in. Like there's definitely some heat uh, between the two of them. And Cornette's got to, he puts everything else over. Because the main thing for him probably is the, the heavenly body being back to being the champions. But but he's really disappointed in the one superstar that he's got the company. He's got the top heel buddy going to win that intercontinental title from the WWF champion. You know, and it's like uh, some genuine work teeth there, you know. And uh, I like that. So, yeah, you got to tune in next week, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Got to tune in next week, man. That's the only way we're going to know what goes down. So really, really 
Really good episode, in my opinion. Uh, and with that said, we do need to give out the disability checks. Before we do so, remember, if you're not a patron, it's easy to become one. Just go to tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. You get the world-class shows, the ECW shows, the video review versions of these episodes as well. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash b slash patreonbtt. I'm sorry. And uh, get the Jim Crocker Promotions pay-per-views and the Clash of Champions that we do there on that feed as well. tinyurl.com slash patreonbtt. Also... Uh, use our Amazon referral link, tinyurl.com slash Amazon. Go buy Bobby Blaze's books. Uh, Pin Me, Pay Me is my personal favorite, but he's got two books. Check them out on there on Amazon and buy anything and everything else off of Amazon. Give that link to the wives, girlfriends, hoes, and side pieces in your life and tell them to use it. Not only give them the link, put it in their browser and save it as a favorite so they use it every time they go to Amazon. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash Amazon. We had a great Amazon referral deal during the holidays. I want to appreciate uh, everybody who used it. I know we're a few months past that now, but thank you during the Christmas season, Thanksgiving, all that stuff. Um, thank you for using Amazon. And please continue to use it at tinyurl.com slash Amazon. Uh, I don't do disability checks. I do grades, and this shit's getting an A+. Plus. I... <sighs> A plus. I love what they did with the bodies. Just that segment alone, that match alone, this thing's getting an A plus. Doc, what are you giving it? Well, don't discount that early on we were still in Jellico, I think, but we had some good in ring action as well. So I mean, lots of stuff moving, lots of stuff happening, surprises, get some shit from the Super Bowl, big happenings, big in ring nine point two. All right. Uh what about you, Bobby? I was going to go 9.0. Uh, I'd give it the A. You know, it's an A, not 90. All right. All right. Good stuff. Uh, Government Cheese Award time. I feel like this is a tough one, so I'm going to throw it to yeah. Doc first to see what he's going to do. Well, and I said last week, you know, be ready for Ron Wright to win it. And, boy, it's really hard not to give it to Ron Wright. But, you know, when the ether comes out, ether is cheese worthy. Give me corny with the ether rag because that is such an effective gimmick, and it's one that Harper should should use in his managerial career if he wants to take the house of hard body to the top. See, the problem is Luke is not as much of an old school fan as us, so Luke doesn't get the whole ether angle or gimmick. But I'm with you. Harper needs to pull out some some ether at at Wildcat, and I'm not sure what we can do to get that to happen, but uh, I'm still working on it, and I'll say that. Uh, I'm going to agree with you, Doc. Cornette's getting it, thanks to the use of the ether. Uh, Bobby, we'll go to you. Who are you going to give your government cheese to? Okay, it's close, 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 and I'm going to tell you why. Tracy Smothers uh, delivering the, hey, I'll take your hand time. I love you. That was a straight shoot. Then he also puts Doc through the table, and I'm like, uh, okay, as good as that is, to finish, though. Bringing out the ether. So I'm going to drift you guys. So Trace is a real close second, man. He he has to get something, but I don't know what. But, yeah, bringing out the ether for that finish. After that match and everything you saw, all the headshots with Doc taking them, uh, the backdrop to the table, uh, uh, Tracy's line, Robert even talking, this and that. But it has to go to Corny bringing out the ether because what a fucking finish to a really good match. So it's unanimous. We'll just keep it with the, the ether finish. I agree. Great episode, though. Fun stuff. And as we start to wind this thing down, I want to uh, plug a couple of friends of mine. The Wrestling Podcast about nothing with ROH's Brian Malone and Mike Crockett. They do their show every single Monday. Please check them out. Also, check out our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn. The Northern version of BTT. Slightly classier. A little bit more professional, but still fun nonetheless. And then check out uh, Mike Pru and JV on the Bottom Line cast, along with the ECW show that they do on our uh, Patreon feed. Bobby, I thought it's you. You got anything you want to plug before we get out of here after another fun episode of Smoky Mountain Wrestling? Yeah, I want to plug uh, Book of the Territory. Thank you guys for having me on the last couple episodes. It's been my pleasure. Um, if you get a chance, stop by and visit me on Twitter. That's the only social media I currently have. I'm on Twitter. I'm at BobbyBlaze744. Love to hear from all the fans of professional wrestling. And if you'd like to, 
either download or purchase one of my books. Uh, I've got two of them out there. I've got Pin Me, Pay Me, Have Booth Will Travel. It's probably my most popular one. The other book I have out there is called I Kicked Out on Two, The Educational Wrestler. Uh, you may or may like, like them both. You may or may not love them both. Um, I'd just love you to get one. Give me a review on it if you already read it. Reviews mean so much to independent authors. Um, so please go to Amazon and leave me a, a review. I don't care if you leave a one star or five star. I just want fair and honest reviews. Uh, it does help a few future purchases. But all I want to do again is say thank you guys very much, Doc. Thank you, Mike. Um, and also, like I said, I'm on Twitter at BobbyBlaze744. It's been great, guys. Thanks. This a was a lot, of a lot of fun. We enjoyed having you, and we're going to have to do this again. Doc, you got anything you want to say before you get out of here? No, nah, man. Get let's, get the, let's get the fun. We actually went long. We don't mind because, well, hey, when the, when the story being told dictates us go a little bit longer, we will. But there's no reason to stick around now. The story's over. I got a, I got one thing, a couple things to say before we get out of Jesus, here. One is, of course you do, one, you fucking. Hold on, hold on. One is this. This episode was. Be blessed and be a blessing. I thought you'd agree with that uh, one, though, Doc. Yes. And then, you know, like Buddy, we. Now, I'm one of these guys that can't just fuck something up. I got to <laughs> fuck it all the way up. Okay. <laughs> and then, although we say to keep your broads away from, from wrestling busting you know uh, baby got baby dolls guts out so buddy with the trifecta at the end of this episode as we went <laughs> off here wondering what's going on with buddy but that's all we got uh i'm gonna throw it over to bobby to hit the tagline to get us out of here book it bitch Everybody, before we get out of here, you know I always got to thank all of our patrons out there. Thank you for supporting this show. Thank you for all that you do for the show. Your patronage is very appreciated. It makes what we do right now twice per week, every single week on the free feed possible. So thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Also, man, I got to tell you guys, the Hall of Fame patron shout-out list continues to grow larger and larger and i am grateful for that so thank you very much for all the hall of fame patrons out there i mean thank you to all the patrons i mean i understand certain people uh can't pledge as much as others and that's fine and that's why you know at the two dollar level you get a bunch of stuff but for the hall of fame uh hall of fame patrons out there thank you very much this list is growing longer and longer each and every week so i don't know how much longer i'm going to be able to do the uh list of hall of fame hall of fame patron shout outs so my apologies if this uh doesn't continue in the future however However, we're going to give it one more try at the beginning of February right here of 2020 with all of our Hall of Fame patrons. So as I say that, I want to give some shout outs to those Hall of Fame patrons. My friend out there, Fritz Von Mulkey, thank you very much. You signed up uh, to the Hall of Fame level. You've been signed up for a while. You bumped up, I should say. So thank you, uh, Fritz Von Mulkey, a.k.a. Doc. Actually, they're not the same person. It's just a running joke. So there you have it. Uh, Rowan Smith, David Ford, Harrison Lee, Isaac Pinley, at Hey Hey It's Isaac. Oh, I'm sorry, at Hey It's Isaac, not Hey Hey It's Isaac. It's just at Oh Hey It's Isaac. Eagle underscore one, Kango Fett, Lee Russell, MDQ for life, George Davis, Kevin Carter, Michael Angel, Bob Richards, Rocky Suazo, 
my man Christopher Champer, Will Harkey, Robbie Dyson, Rick Beebe, Brad Duneif, and Tom Schlegel, Coach Joey Chase, a.k.a. Willie Chase, Steve Malbasa, Kenny Byersdorf, Glenn Abbott at GA Russell Nut on Twitter, Bobby Murray, Marlon Mueller, my man Marlon Mueller, a.k.a. Half Pints Point. You know what I always say, keep cutting those promos, kid. Josh Warren, Everett Starr, Mike Childry, Kyle Riley, disrespectfully classy Marky Blassie, Greg Norman, Johnny on Patreon, the great John Dean, who is at YRC21 on Twitter, Josh Dunn at Ryan and Auburn on Twitter, good old Justin Robert Smith, Joseph Ice, Tim Marecci, Adam Price, Brian Evans, Mark Wilson, Armando Martinez, David Jordan, Jesse Jacobs, Chris Myers, Gerald Green III, Mitchell Johnson, Mike Pru, Will Parker, Classy Alex, David DeVries, SV Pageant, Bill Salsa, Big Rich, Allen at Spy Boy Sports Cap, RE Miller 39, Jay Shiny, Ruben Espinosa, Merciless Jones, Jesse Lucas, Chris Browning, Justin underscore Andretti, Cole Manny, Tutu, Marty Howell, T Hog 94, Gobbled Unreal. Thank you for your generous patronage via the Hall of Fame patron sign up. Last but not least, I uh, just want to give you all a, a heads up on something. I have not been as active lately on either Twitter or Facebook. Um, the shoot job, just very, very busy. And I just haven't had a lot of time. So uh, if you've sent me DMs on Twitter or instant messages or messages on Facebook Messenger and I have not gotten back to you, I just cannot get through them. So... Um, honestly, probably from here on out, the best way to get in touch with me, if you really, really need to get in touch with me is going to be via email for the show, booking the territory at gmail.com. So I just want to mention that I am recording this actual segment on February 5th, 2020, but I wanted to say that if you need to get in touch with me, uh, and I haven't responded to your DM on either Twitter or on Facebook, the best way would probably be email. I tend to check that a few times a day when I can. Um, and if I don't even check it during the day, I usually check it at night. So that's probably the best place to get in touch with me if you need to get in touch with me. With something show-related, Patreon-related, especially if it's Patreon-related, give me a holler there. I mean, it's it's not that... Uh, Again, that's, a, that's the best way to reach me um, to the Gmail. Book in the territory at gmail.com if you're not getting a response on Twitter or on Facebook. And um, I want to shout out Mike Crockett as well for handling the Facebook page and helping moderate with it. Uh, he does a good job. Don't give him a hard time if he doesn't catch things and whatnot. So anyway, and stop getting offended at everything, people. We only live once. Live, love, and laugh, brothers and sisters out there, and just have a good time. That said, I'm going to get out of here. I'm eternally grateful for all of you guys and women. We got a lot of women now who support this show. Thank you very much. Uh, it means a lot. And uh, when we started this nearly five years ago, I didn't think we'd grow like this, but we have. And it's because of you. So thank you. Uh, this is Mike. I'm getting out of here. You know what Hopper always says. Book it, bitch. <laughs>